Star Wars Rise of the Resistance is quite possibly the most technologically complex ride in theme park history, featuring multiple ride systems, elaborate sets, and clever tricks to immerse riders in this out-of-this-galaxy experience. The ride keeps the story going as guests roam deeper into Batu and join the Resistance for an edge of seat adventure to outwit and outsmart the First Order. While the ride took Imagineers longer than expected to get this brand new dark ride just right, it's easy to see that it was worth the wait. Rise of the Resistance is the single most elaborate ride Disney has ever created and was part of a multi-billion dollar park investment from coast to coast. This video is extremely spoiler heavy, so this is your warning for those looking to ride spoiler free. However, if you like theme park technology and want to see how they pulled it off, then you're in the right place. In this video, we'll take a look at the technology of the ride including the track, location system, the vehicle design, special effects, and more, as well as the history of the ride. So sit back, relax, or stand in the queue line, which you're probably already doing, because this is how Star Wars Rise of the Resistance works. Rise of the Resistance, being the most anticipated ride in the new Star Wars Galaxy's Edge area, was constructed at both Disney's Hollywood Studios and Disneyland, opening on December 5, 2019 and January 17, 2020. Each ride replaced a former land or section of land and extended onto a section of off-limits areas. The ride takes multiple cues from other rides and features the result of decades of effect refinement and innovation that Disney is known for. Preparation for the land the ride is within began with the closure and demolition of the Backlot Tour, Lights, Motors, Action, and Streets of America at Disney's Hollywood Studios back in 2016, and the demolition of Big Thunder Ranch and the reroute of the Rivers of America at Disneyland. From there, land clearing and construction accelerated quickly to meet the rapidly approaching opening year of the Twin Galaxy's Edge lands. During this time, not too much information was known about the two attractions each land would feature, and even less so about the headlining attraction, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, other than it would be the most ambitious ride Disney had ever taken on. After structures began to go vertical, fans with a watchful eye began to notice the formation of two AT-ATs, or ADATs, inside the enormous show building for the ride. With the majority of construction concluding at the end of 2018, work could finally begin on the meat and potatoes of the ride. It was hard to determine what was truly going on inside, as it's a little hard to see through a wall, but over time, despite Disney's efforts, what was going on inside was a little, well, let's call it less than ideal. With this being a combination of multiple ride systems, Disney's contractors and Imagineers were met with a steep learning curve and learned a lot not really from preempting issues and more from experiencing them. Initial issues persisted with the laying of RFID puck LPS or local positioning flooring being placed the wrong way which drastically affected their schedule. Later, another, more publicized issue popped up of Wi-Fi dropping in dead zones. These were places within the ride building where a connection to Wi-Fi to communicate with the ride vehicles became difficult as having so many connections left to random dumps of connections causing a ride stop. While the ride's opening was eventually pushed back, it's easy to see why it was necessary to take this action. However, it later led to a more focused opening on one of their largest investments, giving it the spotlight it deserves while not being overshadowed by the opening of a full land. Rise of the Resistance is a combination of multiple ride systems coming together during the main section of the ride. Inside, the ride utilizes motion simulators, trackless dark ride vehicles, and a version of the Tower of Terror's drop shaft. This large combination of ride systems, as well as the collaboration between them and all on-ride effects, means that there are countless points in which the ride can go down. As riders make their way through multiple pre-shows, they will encounter multiple effects to trick the eye and immerse them in the sequel trilogy based experience. These are how those effects work. In the first pre-show, guests are herded into a cave style briefing room. To increase capacity, there are actually two rooms which allow for a steady flow of guests in and out. 
Inside, guests are met by BB-8 rolling around atop a large wall. BB-8 is positioned at this height to assure that his base is not seen. You may notice that when BB-8 rolls, he only rolls around a certain point. That's because, as you may have guessed, he's being controlled from the back out of view like a standard puppet. His equipment sits on rails and at the end of the arm is a spherical shell that rotates to make it appear he is rolling on the rock wall. Set up next to BB-8 is a large hologram effect. Originally this effect was believed to be a use of Mugen or the classic Pepper's ghost effect, but that was quickly changed when guests with a careful eye noticed there were matching lights, dents, and scratches on the wall and the tunnel behind the hologram. It was later discovered that this effect actually uses a large one-way mirror positioned at an angle to make the half of a hologram machine appear as one full-sized one and to assure that riders and guests don't see the reflection of the wall behind them behind the hologram effect as well. Behind the one-way mirror is actually an OLED screen that shows the video of Ray. An OLED screen is used here as opposed to a standard projector or LCD screen because of the way they work. The difference is clear when each screen needs to show black. The LCD screen and projectors essentially mask the backlight which does not block all light. OLED screens don't have a backlight and use a large array of LEDs to form the image. When an OLED screen needs to show a black section, those LEDs are simply not on and produce no light. There are even some smart devices that utilize this technique Disney used here, such as Mirror, a fitness and exercise screen. The light produced by the OLED screen is the only thing that shines through the mirror and is visible to guests. As you can see in this demo, a sheet of one-way mirror is placed in front of an OLED screen, which then can shine through. The effect is only convincing by the setting it is placed in, with low lighting making it hard to identify the screen. However, if you were to shine a light on the wall behind you, that light would seemingly appear behind the hologram too, because the tunnel behind the hologram is simply a reflection of the room you're in. The video of Ray's hologram was filmed at an angle to add to the illusion of depth versus a flat head-on shot. After this pre-show, guests are rushed to the transport ship where they are intercepted and captured by the First Order. The second pre-show is a large subway-like ship that will take you along your journey. What you may easily realize is that this is a small simulator that moves around. There are two doors, one on each side, which leads guests to immediately guess that they will exit through the other door. But to the surprise of guests, they actually exit through the same door they entered. But now they're on the Star Destroyer. But how? While the second pre-show is a simulator, there's a catch. It's a simulator on a giant turntable. As you enter the transport vehicle, the giveaways lie just below your feet that you likely missed. At the edge of the vehicle, you can notice the large circular edge of the turntable. If you peer out the windows, you may notice that you are flying at a bit of a circular fashion. Imagineers also utilize the movement of the animation to match the movement of the turntable by moving it in spurts. When the turntable speeds up, you appear to be accelerating. Once your two-minute journey is finished, the simulator docks on the Star Destroyer side and closes flaps for safety and then you are ordered off the transport vehicle. You then pass by the large outdoor view of space, guarded by an army of stormtroopers. Not all are animatronics, but they do move their heads occasionally. From there, you are directed into holding cells, where you will be interrogated by Kylo Ren. This is actually one of the more off-the-shelf effects, but Disney opted to make it more than just a standard mutation effect by actually projecting the shadows Kylo and the rest would cast if they were actually there. It really helps sell the effect as opposed to being obviously a screen being projected onto. After Kylo Ren leaves, you are suddenly broken out of the cell by the resistance. Here, a short throw projector and strobes are used to project the glowing red metal being cut. The door pulls out and slides over, there were a mechanism visible if you look carefully at the top of the door. It's now the moment guests have been waiting for, as you are rushed into the next room and loaded onto the main ride vehicles. These vehicles are custom ETF trackless ride vehicles. ETF is a dark ride equipment manufacturer based in the Netherlands and has provided vehicles for Disney for years. These custom vehicles don't feature a motion base, which allows them to move faster through the ride and makes the experience more thrilling and boosts capacity than other slower vehicles. During the loading process, the vehicles are receiving their ride path from the RCS, which it will then execute. Unlike the typical wire-guided method seen on other trackless systems, these vehicles use an RFID puck system that each car reads and allows for it to understand where it is in the building. 
These pucks respond to the vehicle by relating relative position data that it can then use. This is often referred to as an LPS or Local Positioning System. There are two floors the vehicles use, so assuring the vehicle not only knows where it is, but what floor it's on is very important. These vehicles have a restraint system, sound, lights, and a simple droid on the front that moves and lights up. To power each vehicle, Disney employs a rapid charging battery system. You might notice that the vehicles are always positioned in the same way each time during boarding. They're positioned this way because underneath each vehicle is a charging pad they've aligned with to charge. At the end of the ride, the vehicles also dock again and charge while guests unload. There's also only 4 unload spots, while there's 8 loading spots. There are allegedly actually more vehicles than it appears, and once the vehicles move away from the unload area, they proceed into a line of additional chargers to charge more before they move back into the loading areas. Once dispatched, the action begins immediately as you are confronted by two empty vehicles that are actually there to replace you in the loading area, but play the part to make you believe you have already been caught. You then move into a hallway where you escape a probe droid. You are then redirected to take the lifts ahead, but a pair of stormtroopers presented using a musion effect confront you and begin shooting at you. The blast from the stormtroopers uses an old trick from persistence and vision devices. You might remember as a kid getting those spinning light toys where they would seemingly form a line of light mid-air. That's what's going on here. There are two fans on the sides that spin so fast they practically disappear. On the blades are a set of LEDs that turn on at a very specific point to create what appears to be a line of red light in mid-air. As for damage from these blasts, there's actually two effects going on. Above riders on the ceiling, two chunks of the ceiling appear to have been blasted away. This effect uses a well-concealed panel that flips out of the way in a fraction of a second. If you slow down videos of the effect, you can actually see the panel mid-flip. As for damage on the sides of the room, this is simply a clever use of projection mapping to light the set using the projector and animating blaster damage onto it. As we move into the next room, we finally see our AT-ATs or ADATs. There's actually only two of them, but with a clever use of a floor to ceiling mirror, there appears to be another room with more AT-ATs or ADATs. More projected damage is used here as more stormtroopers shoot at you from above. The vehicles then proceed into the lifts where small flaps come up to prevent the vehicle from rolling off the open-ended lift. When they roll back off the lifts, another flap comes up and helps reset for the next vehicle. Taking the lifts on the side leads us to the second floor where guests are shot at again. The blasts here are LEDs hidden in the ceiling. They happen so quickly that you may miss that they're actually from the pipes above you. When they reach the wall, pre-made cutout or more projected damage shows on the walls because naturally those stormtroopers have terrible aim. Just when riders think they're safe, they're spotted by a Kylo Ren animatronic and backup. Lights then shine in the faces of riders to conceal the next illusion of Kylo Ren now chasing after you down a short hallway. While Kylo Ren is projected on a screen that actually moves closer, the saber is actually a real prop. The shadow that obscures Kylo's hand is enough to squeeze in the mechanism that swings the saber along with the animation. In a sense, a projection is holding and moving a physical prop. Once the vehicle escapes into a fake elevator, passing floors are projected by the light that shined in your face earlier. Those were actually projectors. This is when the next practical effect takes place. Kylo lands on top of the elevator and proceeds to gouge his saber through the ceiling, cutting a hole in the process. This has by far been the easiest effect for guests to figure out. Originally, Imagineers wanted to use a projected material to achieve a more convincing effect, but this was easier said than done and the effect was ultimately changed. Instead, the saber effect uses a rotating panel with a circular path cut out. A rapidly spinning and glowing saber punches through the ceiling and rotates to make it seem like it's cutting through, when in reality it's just rotating to show more of the cutout. If you slow down the video, you can actually see the end of the cutout pop out just before the saber comes down. Moving into the next room, large cannons blast into space at the resistance. This is simply a set of windows into a large curved screen. Each cannon recoils in and out of the vehicle's path and uses a separate protocol to ensure they don't hit the vehicles. 
As we turn left, the wall is hit with more blasts from the resistance and suffers damage, which uses pull-out plates to reveal internals. A Kylo Ren animatronic then uses the force to pull us in and tell us that he will get what he wants. Here, an effect originally tested on Mystic Manor at Hong Kong Disney is used to make it look like the wall behind Kylo was hit and the panels were sucked out into space. These pull-away panels are essentially jigsaw puzzle style wall pieces on brackets that swing away revealing another screen of the outside. A piece of the ceiling falls from above and seemingly knocks Kylo out into space. In the event that the Kylo animatronic is not functional, a B-mode was created to lead the vehicles to the side screen window where an animated Kylo continues the story. Finally, in the finale of the ride, the vehicles escape into the next hallway where they are directed into the next big event. The drop tower. This is in fact one of the biggest results from years of testing on rides like the Tower of Terror. The vehicles load one each into an escape pod and lock into the floor to prevent sliding. The pod is actually mounted on top of a motion base that pivots on a single point which is also mounted on a drop tower section. The pair of vehicles share one large curved screen and when the show door and safety door close and everything is clear they drop at the same time. It's like a mini Star Tours on top of the Tower of Terror. While the drop is not huge or forceful, the motion base tilts riders back to simulate an increased force while you drop. In much the same way, simulators tilt back to fake acceleration. Once the tower is ready and lines back up with the new first floor, the vehicles are clear to back out and proceed. The tower resets so quickly that you can even see the safety door close only a second or two after you back out in order to return to the second floor to take the next pair of vehicles. There are two sets of tower pairs to increase capacity here as well. Once the vehicles get the go-ahead from the RCS to proceed to the unload area and the ride concludes. This crazy combination of multiple ride systems is one of the biggest risks Disney has taken for a ride and is truly one of a kind. Rise of the Resistance is now open at Disney's Hollywood Studios in Disneyland and is truly something you won't want to miss. Altogether, this technology works in unison to create a seamless and thrilling adventure that has amazed and blown away hundreds of thousands and probably now millions of riders and will continue to do so for decades to come. I hope you've enjoyed this informational dive into the inner workings of Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. We create these videos to showcase the awe-inspiring technology and engineering that goes into creating lines we yell our heads off on daily. Thank you for joining us, and we hope we've inspired your curiosity through technology and engineering. Be sure to check out our playlist of other How Does This Right Work videos in the iCard above. Some of which you might like, there's a lot of them. We make educational ride models and our social media links are below. Once again, thank you so much for watching and subscribing. Welcome to Coaster Limes, and we'll see you in the parks.